What is going on, everyone? Joe here from Different Take. What y'all doing? Staying inside too? Same. So we're all doing the same thing? It's awesome. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you aren't already, and remember to click the bell so you don't miss out on any new content with all this free time we have now. Yeah. If you have any Netflix original shows that you like, or if you're in the middle of watching one right now, make sure to drop them down in the comment section below. I know everything is a little... Coronavirus! 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 Right now. So I put this list together to hopefully help people take their minds off of things, even if it's just for a small part of the day, I figured it could help. So this list is geared a little more towards lighthearted comedy, like sitcoms, escapism type stuff, except for the first couple on the list. So just a heads up, there'll be no documentaries, no reality TV, and no really heavy, dark dramas that'll be on this list. They'll be on their own list, and that's for another day. This list is in somewhat of an order, but I wouldn't put too much weight on where they're exactly numbered. It's not entirely least favorite to favorite. This list is completely subjective, and they're recommendations, and they are just that recommendations. You are entitled to your own opinion, but let's not take it to heart if your favorite show isn't where you want it to be or isn't on this list at all, because it's probably because my procrastinating ass just hasn't been able to watch it yet. So let's just relax. It's just woosah, woosah. Let's get to it. Here's 15 Netflix original shows to watch during this debacle. Okay, number 15. The Society. The Society is a drama slash mystery. The Society follows a group of teenagers who are mysteriously transported to a facsimile of their wealthy New England town. As they struggle to figure out what has happened to them and how to get home, they must establish order and form alliances if they want to survive. The series is basically a modern day take on Lord of the Flies. It's got one season and I believe they're working on a second one. The show is pretty solid. It has its flaws, but overall, if you like drama and if you like mystery, definitely check it out. Number 14. You. You is a drama slash suspense slash thriller originally debuting on the Lifetime Network. Yep, you heard that right. The Lifetime Network follows Joe Goldberg, a New York bookstore manager who falls in love with a customer and quickly develops an extreme toxic and delusional obsession. It's about a stalker. The guy is a flat out stalker. He's a serial killer. There's no bones about it. The guy's fuck crazy. Its second season just came out like a month or so ago, and I believe they just renewed it for a third. I did not think I was going to like this show. I had no interest, but I gave it a shot one day, and it was actually pretty entertaining. Definitely has some suspense and drama. You just, you get pulled in. And it's not because you like the guy. You get pulled in because you're afraid of what he's going to do next. You want him to get caught. It's like, it's like watching a movie from the viewpoint of a serial killer or a stalker. And it goes to show you that dangerous people can blend into society really, really well. They look normal. You really gotta be on your game and make sure your awareness is on point because they'll just blend right in. You just think they're normal and <laughs> stranger danger, get out of there. Number 13, and this is the last of the more drama-based stuff. This is for my horror movie fans out there. The Haunting of Hill House. It's about five siblings who grew up in the most famous haunted house in America. Now adults, they're reunited by the suicide of their youngest sister, which forces them to finally confront the ghosts of their own past. Created by director Mike Flanagan, who I am a huge fan of, he directed Dr. Sleep, uh, Ouija, Origin of Evil, among others. He's really good at building atmosphere and stellar visuals. He's good storytelling. He's, he's a talented director. Haunting of Hill House has one season and it was renewed for a second season. I'm not going to lie, the show freaked me out a little bit. The story is good, you get attached to the characters, there's some really creepy visuals, there's some things that happen that really messes with your head. It was just really well done and very impressive. If you like Mike Flanagan's style, check out Hush, which is currently on Netflix, and Gerald's Game, which is a Netflix original. Number 12, Everything Sucks. Everything Sucks is a coming of age slash comedy slash drama. The show parodies teen culture of the mid 1990s. Set in 1996, it focuses on a group of teenagers who are making a movie together, and they're dealing with issues such as finding their sexuality, mental health, and just growing up. Stars Peyton Kennedy, Sidney Sweeney, among others. Everything Sucks had one season and unfortunately was canceled after the first season. But the show has developed a cult following. This was definitely a case of bad timing. Everyone was talking about Stranger Things at the time and this show, unfortunately, just got lost in the shuffle with the nostalgia craze. It's a shame because this show was a lot of fun. Maybe critics attacked it because they thought it relied too much on the 90s nostalgia, but I think that was intentionally done. I think it was a way for younger audiences to relate to the younger characters. At the same time, an older audience could relate to the younger characters as well because at that time in the 90s, they were kids. That was their childhood. I don't know, I thought it was good. A lot of people thought it was good. 
It's funny, it has good characters, good storytelling, good dose of 90s nostalgia, and it had a good heart at the core of the story. Fans of the show are trying to get Netflix to bring it back for another season, but we'll see. Number 11, Working Moms. Working Moms is a comedy that looks at the personal and professional lives of a group of mothers who are in their 30s trying to balance home and work. It's got four seasons. The fourth just came out, I think, in January. This was a fun one. I really enjoyed this show. For the people who watch this show who actually are working moms and working dads who are trying to balance home and work life, they can definitely relate and identify with the characters in this show. And in some way, maybe it can be therapeutic for them, too. <laughs> Are you okay? On the other hand, for women and men who aren't working parents, it gives you an idea of what life is like as a working parent, but the comedy is so well done that it doesn't feel preachy. You can watch it just for the laughs. Side note for number 10, the only reason why this show is so low is because I know it's an acquired taste. Otherwise, it'd be way higher. Number 10, Mystery Science Theater 3000 The Return, or MST3K for short. MST3K is a comedy, it's a reboot of the cult classic show that aired for 10 years from 1989 to 1999. It's a goofy show that knows it's a goofy show, and it does not take itself too seriously. If you don't know what it's about, it's about basically a guy and two robots who are forced to watch really cheesy movies. Created by the legendary Joel Hodgson, stars Jonah Ray, Baron Vaughn, among others. It's got two seasons, and I do believe the second season is funnier, but the first season is still pretty good. I'm a huge fan of MST3K. If you just want to throw something on for laughs without really having to follow any sort of plot or storyline, this is the perfect way to go. Number nine, Russian Doll. Russian Doll is a comedy slash mystery follows a young woman named Nadia on her journey as the guest of honor at a seemingly inescapable party one night in New York City. Think Groundhog's Day, Happy Death Day kind of deal. Created by Natasha Leone and Amy Poehler. It's got one season and they just announced that the second season is on the way. This one was a unique one. I didn't know what to think of it when I first saw the trailer, but I was intrigued. Besides the Happy Death Day, Groundhog's Day similarities, it's a new original idea. It's well acted, it's well written, it's a mystery that keeps you guessing, and it's pretty damn funny. Number eight, this show is such an underrated gem of a show. I believe this show is so criminally underrated, it's, it's unfair. Number eight, Friends from College. Friends from College depicts the tragic yet comic misadventures of a close-knit group of college alumni in their 40s as they navigate their ambitious yet clumsy and romantically intertwined lives in New York City. Lisa, look. Lisa, look. Lisa, look. What? As a great ensemble cast that stars Keegan-Michael Keel, the great Fred Savage, Annie Parisi, I believe that's how you're saying her name, Nat Faxon, J. Sue Park, if I mess that up, I'm sorry, the hilarious Billy Eichner, and last but not least, Kobe Smolders, who I admittedly have a huge crush on. I'm begging you not to. Hey, don't, don't talk to my husband like that. You come over here and you say that to my face. Don't come over here. Hey. Fuck you. Fuck you. The show had two seasons, and unbelievably was canceled after its second season. This is one of those shows where I think the critics just did not get it. Because if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes score, the critic score is low and the audience score is high. The audience score is like at 88. When Rotten Tomatoes scores are that drastically different, that usually indicates that someone didn't get it. And this time it wasn't the audience. don't have to grunt every time you hit the ball. I don't even hear myself. I'm just so kind of... Really? It sounds like you're taking a shit. I've been here 10 minutes. You've taken 3,000 shits. No, nah, that's not what it sounds like when I poop. The show was cleverly written with relatable situations. It had such a good ensemble cast with great chemistry, and my God, was it funny. What are you guys doing? Slow-mo. Just doing a slow motion. Slow-mo, it's really cool. Yeah, like a slow-mo. Yeah, and like Blink slow. Yeah. It's a crime that this show wasn't able to finish their story. I mean... Fans are trying to get Netflix to bring it back, but we'll see. Number seven, Glow. Glow is a comedy slash drama set in Los Angeles during the 1980s. An unemployed actress hopes to find stardom by portraying a female wrestler. It's loosely based on the true story of the 1980s wrestling show Glow, which stands for Glorious Ladies of Wrestling. It stars Allison Brie, Betty Gilpin, Mark Marin, among others. Three seasons, it's got three seasons, and I believe a fourth one is on the way. I love everything about this show. So let's give them what? Blood tits. 
Storytelling. Storytelling. It's funny as hell. It's fun. Great cast. Great storytelling. Great nudity. <laughs> but for both sides, just to be fair. If I remember correctly, it's both. But overall, a great, fun, fun show. Number six, and this show I believe is very underrated. I'm su actually surprised people don't talk about this show more often. Number six, American Vandal. American Vandal is a true crime satire comedy that explores the aftermath of a costly high school prank that left 27 faculty cards vandalized with phallic images. Dicks, someone literally spray painted dicks on all the 27 faculty cards. <laughs> and make this shit up. Over the course of the show, an aspiring sophomore documentarian investigates the controversial and potentially unjust expulsion of troubled senior and known dick drawer, Dylan Maxwell. Now, unlike the other iconic true crime shows, the addictive American Vandal will leave one question on everyone's mind until the very end. Who drew the dicks? It's got two seasons with two separate investigations, two separate stories about two separate incidents and suspects, the series creators announced that the second season is the final season. This show is absolutely hysterical. Just think, if you have Making a Murderer, but instead of it being a murder, it's about the most ridiculous thing you could think of. Like, if a high school stoner who drew dicks at a high school was accused of drawing dicks at a high school. Yeah. Ball hairs. The ball hairs. They're different. It's just one piece of the puzzle. This is gonna take way more than just ball hairs. Oh my God. But the funny thing is, it's treated so seriously that while you're laughing your ass off the entire time, you can't help but to get sucked into the true crime story. You seriously wanna know who did it. It's so damn funny. It's such a clever idea and it was so well executed. If you have not watched American Vandal yet, I beg you, go watch this. It's ridiculous, but it's so well done. American Vandal is a phenomenal show. Number five, Sex Education. Sex Education is a coming of age slash comedy slash drama. It's about this kid, Otis, who's basically an inexperienced, socially awkward high school kid, and his mom is a sex therapist. So he's sort of a reluctant expert on the subject. When kids at school find out about this, Otis realizes he can use this to his advantage. Otis teams up with this girl, Maeve, who's like a naturally smart bad girl, and together they set up like an underground sex therapy clinic to deal with all their fellow students weird and wonderful and different sex problems. As it goes on, Otis realizes he may need some therapy of his own. It's got two seasons. The second season just came out a couple months ago. This is an outstanding show. I can't speak enough of this show. This show is so damn good. The writers of the show touch on so many different important topics involving sex, relationships between young people, straight feelings, gay feelings, bisexual feelings, relationships and communications between parents and their kids, relationships between adults. I'm not even scratching the surface on all the topics that they really hit on. There's so much that they hit on in the show and they treat every single topic, topic of sex and everything else, everything around it, with maturity and respect. They take it seriously without sacrificing the comedy. It's still funny. Sex education is so different than a lot of shows that are out there right now. It really is a breath of fresh air. If you're open to different things and you're open to seeing how people deal with these complicated issues. If you're open to that sort of stuff, if you're open to those conversations, if you can be an adult about it, check the show out. It's so, so good. Number four is Love. Love is a comedy drama that follows nice guy Gus and brazen wild child Mickey as they navigate the exhilarations and humiliations of intimacy, commitment, love and other things they were hoping to avoid. Love is an unflinching, hilarious, and excruciatingly honest take on modern relationships. Love was created, written, and executive produced by Judd Apatow and Paul Rust. And if you know Judd Apatow stuff, it has that similar sort of comedy to it. Love stars Jillian Jacobs and Paul Rust. It's got three seasons, and the series creators announced that the third season was the final season. So the series has concluded. The show is hysterical, but it treats the subject of relationships with such respect and honesty that it's really, really relatable. The cast is fantastic. I love Jillian Jacobs. She's hysterical and really is a standout in this show. Mom always tells me I should date a Midwestern boy. Cause they're really sweet and honest. Oh, really? Well, uh, tell your mom to go fuck herself. I'm kidding. It's a joke. I didn't. I got it. Love is one of my favorite shows. One of the things that it does really, really well is that 
it hits on the games that people play when they're sort of dating. That whole going back and forth kind of chess game going on, that's executed really, really well. If you've ever been in a relationship or if you've ever dated someone or started going dating where you're starting to talk to somebody and you're going back and forth through texting, you're trying to figure out what they're thinking and what you're thinking, they nailed that part of it. All right, we're getting down to it. This is the top three. Number three, Easy. Easy is a comedy drama. It's an anthology series created by one of my favorite directors, Joe Swamberg. The series explores diverse Chicago characters as they fumble through the modern maze of love, sex, technology, and culture. According to this study, if I was doing less laundry and less dishes, we would be having more sex. No, it's not our fault if you feel emasculated. Exactly. But you're saying Excuse that the women French. are less likely to want to fuck the guy if they're making more money. Bam! No. Okay. The series, written and directed by Swanberg, features appearances by the likes of, ready for this? Orlando Bloom, Mylon Ackerman, Jake Johnson, Mark Marin, Dave Franco, Hannibal Ferris, Emily Ratajkowski, Kate Minucci, and a bunch more. It's got three seasons and Swanberg announced that the third season was the final season. So the series has concluded. Easy is such an interesting show. I love Joe Swanberg's style. He uses a lot of handheld shots. Instead of like full scripts, he'll sometimes write bullet points for the actors and he'll just let them improv their lines. The result of that is this very gritty, raw, realistic way of storytelling. It's like, it's like you're getting a small peek inside these characters' lives in this short amount of time. There's something else missing. Yes. Hi there, oh, Mr. Oh, this is that voice you're doing. First of all, I'm a, I'm a construction worker, right? So why am I fixing your sink? So in this show, Easy, we find that life is not always that easy. We have all these different stories with these different people, different complicated situations. There are funny moments, dramatic moments, sweet moments, sad moments, sexy moments and uncomfortable moments, but we've all been there. The show treats each subject matter in each episode with maturity. Because of that, the show feels very real and very authentic and very relatable. It really is a show made by adults for adults. If you like Joe Swanberg's style and you wanna see more, check out Win It All. It's a Netflix original film starring Jake Johnson, directed by Joe Swanberg. Number two, and this probably isn't a surprise to anyone, Stranger Things. Stranger Things is a sci-fi slash fantasy. It's a love letter to the 80s classics that we all know and love. Stranger Things is set in 1983, Indiana. It's where a young boy vanishes into thin air as friends, family, and local police search for answers. They are drawn into an extraordinary mystery involving top secret government experiments, terrifying supernatural forces, and one very strange little girl. It was created by the Duffer Brothers, stars Winona Ryder, David Harbour, Millie Bobby Brown, and a bunch of others. It's got three seasons and the fourth is in development. Not much to say here, if you haven't watched this show yet, I don't know what the hell you're waiting for. Everyone has talked about this show at some point or another. It has a huge following and rightfully so. It has a creative and interesting premise. The 80s nostalgia is perfectly balanced. The cast is outstanding with great young actors that really are the glue that holds it all together. The writing is top notch and I cannot wait for season four. So if you have not watched it yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go watch it, like now, like right now, like after I name the next show, but go watch this. It's a great show. Okay, we're finally here at number one. This is the number one show I recommend for right now. With all the crazy shit going on, just to shut off the world and laugh a little bit and just watch something to take your mind off of things. You probably weren't seeing this one coming. Maybe you were, maybe you weren't. Number one, Grace and Frankie. Grace and Frankie is a comedy slash drama. It's about two ass opposite women on opposite sides of the spectrum who become bonded, jilted wives after their husbands reveal that they have been having an affair with each other since the 1990s and now plan to get married. It's a crazy ass plot, but it makes them really funny situations. This cast is so damn good. It's such a great ensemble cast. It stars Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, Martin Sheen, Sam Waterston, Brooklyn Decker, June Diane Raphael, Ethan Embry, and Baron Vaughn, with a bunch of great actors that also make guest appearances throughout the entire series. It's currently on season six, which just came out this year. So it's not only a great show, but it has six seasons to binge right now. 
six. So you have plenty of stuff to catch up on and there's so much to watch. The first season is okay. After the first season though, it really gets better with every season. It's all hilarious. I ever told you that you can't have this? This right here is Saul's worst nightmare. <laughs> oh, it's Saul Schmall. <laughs> <laughs> my, oh my, good, right? I've never felt this one before. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, I had little interest in this show at first. One day I just gave it a shot, and now it's one of my favorite shows. Mic drop. Let's go home. Whenever I put this show on, it makes me laugh. Even when I try to put it on as background noise, I can't help but to get sucked into it because it's so damn entertaining. And that is a mark of a good show. It's such a good heart of comedy that deals with a multitude of issues for people ranging in their 20s to their 50s or 60s. It's just constantly a clash of different personalities, different social backgrounds. There's just so many different things that they cover and it's such a neat little show. They deal with all these issues, but it's never preachy. It's just funny and it's fun to watch. The cast is phenomenal and they all play off each other so well. Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin are like the perfect odd couple frenemies with their clashing type A, type B personalities. We also get the other odd couple in Martin Sheen and Sam Waterston. And by the way, Sam Waterston is absolutely hilarious in this show. Much different from his character that he played in Law and Order. Ethan Embry and Baron Vaughn have great chemistry together, playing the role of adopted brothers. And I am right now professing my love for Brooklyn Decker and June Diane Raphael, who play sisters on the show. They are my favorite part of this show. They are so damn funny together. What's up, Brosif? That's what I'm gonna call you now. No, you are not. Mm-hmm. Mel? Brosha? Are you fielding a ton of dong picks? It's just like, dong, 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 dong. No, Mallory, you've skipped right over the times of lady butt stuff and landed smack in the times of dude butt stuff. Thank your lucky fucking stars. You can barely do a jumping jack. Especially June Diane Raphael. She's absolutely hilarious. Her little reactions, her delivery, her comedic timing. Once we're profitable. I want $9 million. Fuck my life, fuck it hard. So nice to meet you too. This is Mallory's husband, Mitch. He's working. Oh, there's no tension here. Right, Mitch? Back me up, buddy. Okay. <clears throat> the whole scene just gets elevated when she's there. I mean, she's just dynamite in this show. June, I love you. You're awesome. Again, six seasons. Go watch it. Right now, go watch it. If you have seen these shows, awesome. If you haven't, awesome. Now you have some stuff to watch, so definitely check them out. Hopefully these shows can entertain you and make you laugh and help take your mind off of what the hell's going on out there. If you get pissed off because your show didn't make the list, don't take it to heart. And if you're still pissed off after that, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. So real quick before I go, a good friend of mine who We've been friends since we were kids. A real good friend of mine, Tom Cassidy, put out an album called Funny Matic. He's a stand-up comedian, and this was his debut album. It's available on the iTunes store, the Google Play store. It's available to stream, so if you can check his stuff out and go support him, I really appreciate it. Okay, so hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. Subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you, Selena. Take it away.